All right, let's go on. Let's talk about vision. But first, let's ask, why are we studying vision? Why is that an important thing to look at? It's not just that that's what I study, although that's relevant. Um, more relevant um, is that we are just spectacularly visual animals. If you ever dealt this, try blindfolding yourself for 15 minutes and try just doing basic stuff, and you will learn why in what senses we are such visual animals. We lean on vision for pretty much everything we do. Another way of looking at that is that vision occupies a very large percent of the cortex. Pretty much roughly all of this stuff back here does vision in various ways, okay? About five billion neurons. So we allocate a lot of machinery to vision and that's both because vision is hard and ill posed problem in many ways and it's because we lean on vision for most of what we do, okay? Um, another reason to study vision is it is arguably the best understood um, system in the human mind and brain. And that's for all kinds of reasons. It's in part because um, the study of vision in humans has had this, uh, the study of the neural basis of vision, especially in humans, has had this huge benefit from decades of research on the visual system in monkeys which seems pretty homologous to the system in humans and from which we've learned a great deal. My personal view is that the reason that functional MRI studies of vision in humans are just much better in general methodologically, there's a lot less kind of stupid garbage in functional MRI of vision than there is in um, some other domains, which shall remain nameless right now. I think that's in part because there were a lot of ways to reality check based on the neuroscience of vision in monkeys which had been going on since the 50s. And so you couldn't just kind of make stuff up because there was all this kind of hard data to relate it to right from the get-go. And that, I think, instilled kind of methodological rigor in studies of vision, which is another reason we'll start with it here. Okay. Um, and another reason to study vision is that until recently, uh, AI vision systems, machine vision, um, couldn't touch us. Right? We were just way better, and so there was you know, all this magic going on in human brains that the people across the street um, don't know how to do in machines. Now, that story has gotten a little more complicated, because now those guys all of a sudden can do all this stuff. They're really good at pattern recognition, in some cases rivaling human abilities uh, with visual pattern recognition. However, there's still a lot that we can do with our visual systems that the AI guys can't. Uh, and so there's still lots of secrets in the human brain that they can learn. Those secrets are moved into a different zone, not just pattern recognition, but other kinds of things that we'll talk about later in the course to do more with visual understanding. That is not just being able to label the objects in front of you, that there's people and desks and computers and a street and cars and so forth, but understanding their relationship to each other, how they are interacting with each other, how they depend on each other, what the whole gist conceptually of the scene is, and that goes far beyond pattern recognition, and AI systems are not so good at that. And we'll talk about all of that in a month or so. Okay, so let's start again with the kind of low-tech version of Mars computational theory. What is the problem of vision? What do we use it for? Well, vision is about telling us what's out there in the world. So there's a world out there, it casts images on our retina, and we figure out what's going on out there, and this mystery box is vision, and that's what we want to understand. Okay, so that's a problem. How do you go from the rich input that we get in the world through our visual systems to some kind of understanding of what's out there? Okay, Okay. so I gave you examples before. Here's one example. Well, that comes in. You identify that's Julia, or that's Brad, or that's a rabbit. Um, and so we're really good at that. Just to show you how good we are at this, uh, here's a little low-tech demo. I'm just going to flash up a totally random bunch of pictures that have nothing to do with each other. Uh, and you're just going to look at them, and your amazing visual system is going to tell you what each of those things are. Here we go. Okay, everybody got most of them? That's awesome. Those things were going at about four or five images per second. And it, there's another important clue here. There was no way to predict what the next image would be from the previous one. And that tells you that the idea of your expectation of what will happen next, important as it is, um, it is, not, is not necessary, right? Your visual system can figure out the identity of an object even if you have no prior predictions whatsoever, as you couldn't have here, okay? Um, and you're fast. So we wanna know how does all that work? Okay, 
How are we going to think about this? Well, that's what we've been talking about for the last um, bunch of uh, meetings. And the key insight is we're going to think about vision as information processing, as a series of computations done on the input to enable us to get from this to that. Okay. Um, and so one of the key things that you do to try to understand an information processing system is figure out what its steps are. What are the steps in that computation? What are the stages? Um, and what is represented and what is computed in each? All right? So the model is really not like that. There's going to be a whole bunch of processing steps. And what we want to know is what's going on at each of those. All right? And so looking at the brain is just a particularly convenient way to get a sense of that, because actually some of those steps are laid out spatially. And we can look at each of them and say, OK, what's going on here? What's going on there? What's going on there? It's just a very literal way to try to infer them. OK? All right. So let's look in the brain, and let's try to follow that pathway and see what we can learn by characterizing the neural um, mechanisms that are going on at at least the first few stages. Everybody on board with this agenda?